I'm Dave Kassler, amateur call sign KE0OG, here with a little short to answer some comments that have been uh, placed against the various videos that I have. This is from Mitchell Rowe, 7363, on radials for raised antennas. And his question is, how about if I use traps in my radials? I think he's talking about an elevated radial. What kind of current and voltage would they have to withstand at legal limit? Okay, traps in radials. That means you're tuning the radials, okay? And you can do this if you don't have room to put out 66 feet from end to end of radials around that thing. Yes, you can. You'll have all kinds of fun tuning them because you'll have to use a vector network analyzer tuned, da, 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 and you can get those to work. Now, if you have one vertical, this gets all of the RF current. The RF current is divided amongst the radials. So if you have 10 radials, each one will have a tenth of the RF current going through them, okay? So you don't need much. Now, I usually make my radials out of gray or black or white uh, insulated uh, THHN wire and lay them on the ground. Why insulated? I don't want these to be ground rods. I already have that antenna really well grounded. In fact, it has its own ground rod plus some ground radials that go out about this far into the ground, which is too deep for a real radial. I like to lay my radials on the ground in an area where people don't normally go. Now, if you've got them stretched out on the roof or something like that, you can use insulated or non-insulated. Note that that will affect the tuning slightly. But yes, you can load them for the longer radials and it will only carry a small, much smaller portion, assuming you have a decent number of radials, a much smaller portion so the wire need not be gigantic or anything like that. So there you have it. Until we next meet, 73.